Greetings, hockey fans, and welcome back to the Fat Cat Sports Network for continuing coverage of the Island Junior Hockey League as we go behind the bench with Nathan DeRosh. Red Wings head coach Nathan DeRosh has spent 20 plus seasons in hockey in many different capacities, but nothing could have prepared him for this season. COVID starts and stops and restrictions a mere footnote in what this team has seen and been through. As a coach, you focus on the X's and O's, systems, motivation, and conditioning. Instead, this season, DeRosh found himself coaching these kids through terrible loss. When tragedy struck Prince County in September, a Red Wings organization would try to figure out how to go on with the season, and the support from a grieving family would be key as they leaned on each other to try to make sense of it all. Nathan, thank you very much uh, for joining us here on FSN today. Oh, thanks for having me, Jeremy. It's been a bit of an unconventional season for us. Um, I think about September when we lost Alex, um, he was part of our family, and I think it was um, really tough going for September and October for us as a group. Um, the team this year, I think they really taught me um, what family is, and um, I think um, you know, as tough as, as, top as that was, um, with the support of the Hutchinson family, I thought we really came together. Um, we had a focus, and that was to win for Alex. And um, I think that's kind of been the driving motivation for us from start to finish. Um, obviously, from a coaching standpoint, we have a really veteran group. We have a lot of players that have won multiple championships in this league. So with the stops and starts, I think, you know, the veterans did a really good job at, you know, keeping everyone focused. But at the end of the day, um, as a coaching staff, we owe a lot of gratitude to the Hutchison family for supporting us. Alex, his father, has missed a nice time for us this year, so even at practice. So um, can't thank them enough for supporting us through uh, what's been a very trying year off the ice. I think the biggest thing is just pride to wear the uniform. Um, you know, we want guys to come into our dressing room willing to play. Um, I know for myself, stepping in, there was kind of a stigma around junior B hockey that, you know, guys may not care as much. Um, you know, their hockey careers are they're not going much further, things, like, things of that nature, but um, couldn't be further from the truth. And um, from day one, guys have realized that there's an expectation when you put on that Red Wings uniform and you know our Western guys they take a lot of they take a lot of pride wearing that uniform I think for myself when you have guys excited to come to the rink every day willing to learn willing to push each other um, and just care for one another um, great things can happen and I know there's, there's we've had quite a few great teams um, this team has taught me a lot about caring for one another what a, what a team family is in hockey um, and like I said, I can't say enough good things about the, the hockey team that I've coached this year, win or lose. Um, I'm very, very proud to say that I coached this group. They understand that, that habits are very important. So to get into some bad habits, we, we really preach that as a, co as a coaching staff. Um, we did a lot of focusing on ourselves this year. Um, you know, there was a lot of, um, you know, analyzing what our own game was, and I think that really helped. But from a coaching standpoint, um, really, I, I credit a lot to our veteran players. They've kept, kept the focus, and I think for us, I think we set a league record for consecutive wins this year. Um, the guys really just love playing the game, come to the rink. Um, they pride themselves, and at the same time, when you have a full lineup of guys that are capable of making a difference each and every shift, they push each other, right? So you have that internal competition, which I think um, has been really important for us this year. You know, each guy has pride and is a talented group of hockey players. There's no question about it. Um, and there's a lot of internal competition. It's, it's healthy. 
Um, it's important when you have a successful team to have that competition. And I know for us, as a coaching staff, uh, you know, we, we don't pride ourselves on looking to the guy next to you to get it done. Um, we're encouraging guys, let's do your job, step up, be the players that you can be. And we look at trying to improve in our group and our individuals every single day, right? So um, it doesn't surprise me we had six different goals for us in that game. Honestly, I think that um, our depth has been on display all year. Um, seeing a lot of our younger kids um, really progress and take big strides. And uh, it was nice to see um, everybody really kind of get their feet wet especially our younger players in the first game, and I thought they responded really well. Silas is a phenomenal talent. Um, you know, from day one when we got Silas, um, really could see that the skill level was there. Um, seems to be the bigger the game, the bigger Silas plays. Um, I know this year, um, I know we finished probably top five, top ten in scoring, but I think it was a bit of an off year statistically for Silas, and I think the coaching staff, we all knew when playoff time came around, um, that Mr. Handerhand would definitely be a be a factor for, for us. Um, he's been excellent at these playoffs. He's a very coachable individual, and, um, you know, possesses a lot of different talents. I think the first thing you think of when you think of Silas is his speed. Um, so if you look at his goal there, um, in game one, I uh, picks the puck up in his own end, um, closed by a couple of people through the neutral zone. Um, he just has that breakaway speed. He has, he's, he's quite a deceptive skater, um, and obviously he has a great shot. So um, Silas has a lot of things for us. And really, um, I've been fortunate enough to coach a lot of talented players within the Red Wings organization, um, but not too many players can single-handedly take over hockey games like Silas Andrew can. You know, I've been around the league long enough to know um, that you can't take any game for granted. And at the same time, um, it's a short season and you have to create an environment where everybody becomes successful and you have to make sure that as a team, um, you understand that when finals comes around or um, the big games, I'd like to call it, the third group, um, that you have to be at your best and you don't have, you know, there's no honeymoon stage. Once you get to the finals, you have to be ready and we can preach that all year, but at the same time, we have that veteran group. They understand um, what it takes to win. They've played in Game 7. They've played in Don Johnson Cup Finals. Um, they they realize what it takes to win. Um, so really, they've been just pulling us along, and, and it's been a good learning curve for some of our younger players. Um, but at the same time, I think it's just that understanding of what it's going to take to win. So. Um, very complimentary of, of our entire group this year and how we've been able to um, focus and, you know, channel some, you know, a lot of hard feelings that we had this first of the year and into some wins. So really proud of the group this year. They, they really do have a special place with me um, in, all our, in all our teams that I've coached. This is a really special group. I want to thank you very much uh, for joining us on FSN here a second time, and uh, we'll see you Wednesday night. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeremy. Shaping up to be a great final series. The Sherwood Metro is looking to bounce back in games two and three. Home ice advantage here, sort of, at the East Link Center, Charlottetown. Wednesday and Friday, 7.30 start times. Tickets by phone 629-6625. FSN will be there tonight, Wednesday night. Thanks for watching. I'm Jeremy McDonald.